and welcome. So I recently started an experiment that I originally didn't plan to share publicly, but I decided to talk about it and I already wrote a blog post about it and I hope this will be of interest to some of you. So watch this video to find out why I've stopped buying art supplies and other things for one year. I've recently written about how the tendency to buy new art supplies can keep us from making art. And as the last year came to a close, I looked around my desk and the rest of my studio and I thought, who knows for how long all of these supplies could last. I really don't have excessively many materials compared to some other people I know, but it's still enough to feel a bit stifled under it from time to time. And I usually avoid impulse purchases, but when it comes to art supplies, I'm often too curious to stop myself. And I'm sure many of you know this feeling. I tend to rationalize this by telling myself it's for my job or at least for teaching others what all the best art supplies are. And this has led to a great number of things that I haven't used as much or not at all over the years. And um, I have to say, I'm a bit ashamed to admit this, I've thrown out quite a few supplies that either dried up or broke or went bad or just weren't usable anymore. So I was thinking that it's usually the things that we buy don't bring us true happiness. It's more often the experiences we make that make us happy or the things that we learn and do. And you usually don't need that much stuff to experience something. So still, I feel I have that hungry ghost inside of me, always wanting more. And getting new stuff has become so easy these days, but somehow that hunger is never really satisfied. And I've asked myself, how can I unlearn this? How, to, how can I make this ghost disappear more often? And so I started decluttering my art drawers in December and sold a good portion of the art supplies that were just sitting around. And I'm actually still in that process as I'm finding it easier to let go of more things now. And the people that I gave the art supplies to or sold them to were all very happy and have already started using them. So that felt great. And um, I also felt felt better and lighter without all these unused jars and tubes sitting around and staring at me every time I opened my drawers. And don't get me wrong, I still have a lot of stuff left, which is more than enough, but the stuff that I have now designated that I will keep it, I know I use all of it regularly. So I'm not an extreme minimalist or anything, but I'm definitely a fan of a simpler life. After letting go of some things, I wanted to make sure that I don't reverse the entire process and set up some rules for myself for 2020. I've decided that I have enough for the time being and I will not buy anything I don't absolutely need for an entire year. So I technically started in December, so this will be my date of reference. This modified shopping ban will not only include art supplies, but everything else around the household, as well as personal stuff. I feel like I really have enough clothes and household items and entertainment options to last me for more than a year. And to keep me on track, I decided to have a few rules and exceptions for these rules. What I can buy. Obviously, I have to buy things like groceries and household supplies. Since my art is my business, so I'm an illustrator by profession, so since art making is my business, I need to make sure that I can work. So if I need something specific for an upcoming commission, then I'm allowed to buy it, but only when I don't have a replacement. I actually expect this to be a very rare case since I really have a lot of supplies. <laughs> Um, I have already mentally planned in a few important business expenses that I know will come later this year. Then replacing things that have broken is fine if I need them in my everyday life, like um, my bike, so bike repair would be okay, or broken computer, etc. So things to keep my daily life going. I'm also going to plan in for exceptions like traveling to workshops or exhibition catalogs from museums that I can uh, only visit once in a lifetime. 
but only when I'm absolutely sure. And I know these occasions can also be traps with uh, these ghosts hiding inside them. About books, this is a bit more difficult because I really like books. I won't buy new books, but swapping books or picking up occasional used books will be okay. I have a library card that I really like and that I really expect to use more. And the only area that my library doesn't cover that well are fiction ebooks in English. So I see how that will go. I will delay each purchase that I have planned for at least two weeks to see if I really need that thing, if it isn't an emergency. And I know that usually it isn't. What I'm not allowed to buy. Buying art supplies just for the sake of having them or wanting to try them is not allowed. The most important rule for me this year is this one. I will also not buy clothes, shoes, cosmetics, household items and electronics. This will hopefully be easier since I'm not even tempted by all of these things. I really have more than enough. Um, all in all, I'm already a very frugal consumer and make a lot of things from scratch or buy stuff used. And I pretty much have all that I need for my everyday life. And I realize it can sound a bit strange to set these kind of artificial rules for yourself. But then again, these seem to be the weird late capitalism times that we live in. And I've realized that when it comes to art supplies uh, and general consuming things, I really indulged myself a lot, a lot of times over the years um, without honoring each item like I should have by, by actually using it. Some of you know that I stopped using social media. I deleted my accounts. I've actually made a video about this too. And um, ever since I did this, I've asked myself how I can support the part of me that wants to be creative and that wants to explore instead of looking for some easy, soothing solution of buying something and liking the thought of doing something creative. Because to me, that's like feeding this hungry ghost too. And um, so for me, just buying stuff feels empty. And essentially, being creative is not about the tools. I have great tools already available. I have really so many different tools. It's not about having them, it's about using them. Uh, I don't mean to cut myself off from all of the nice things, but I really do have enough of them for the time being. And the fact that I have so many of, of these art supplies lying around and still often don't feel compelled to pick them up um, is my sign to, to change something. I think the fact that we can see so many nice things online in other people's possession, if you think uh, of blogs, reviews, YouTube videos with reviews, um, this often activates thoughts that go like, I want to have this so I can do what they do and be like they are and make this kind of great art like they do. But you should know that this just isn't true. It's just a psychological trap and often it's combined with very effective marketing on top of that. And I think the art community and our society as a whole uh, could use far less of that, less focusing on materials and buying options and more focus on techniques, on ideas, on interesting thoughts behind the art. So ideas for expressing yourself, ideas for how to see the world not excuses to simply buy new paint. I don't definitely don't mean to spoil the fun for anyone who enjoys having a lot of things or who loves to collect paint. I don't want to sound preachy. I'm just sharing my perspective and what feels right for me at this point. And I like to put myself through experiments like this so that I can see how it's possible for me to, to change. I know I could probably, with the things I still have, do an entire year of YouTube or blog reviews uh, of my supplies, making you want to buy all of it too. But I'm just kidding, I won't do that, but I, I really could. So all in all, in 2020, I will try and focus on enjoying the things that I already have. And I'm excited and a bit anxious at the same time to see what I can learn from this experience. 
I'm wishing you, all of you, a very creative and happy 2020 with whatever things you need to make cool new artwork and new experiences. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about my experiment in the comments and I'll see you soon. Bye!